Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting problem with Euler's number E. We have z to the power E equals z bar. Normally when we have a problem like E to the power z that will be considered an exponential and in this case a complex exponential but we have quite the opposite. Anyways, this problem was suggested by Josh Frog 8480 Thank you for the idea. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we have z to the power e equals z bar. And we looked at similar problems before, so hopefully you'll remember the idea of this problem. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by z. Because we have z bar on the right hand side, notice that when you multiply z bar by z, you get absolute value of z squared. Because this is a minus bi, this is a plus bi, and their product is a squared plus b squared. But the absolute value of z is the square root of that. So if you square both sides here, you get the identity. Okay? So it's almost always helpful to multiply both sides by z if you have z bar on one side. Let's go ahead and multiply by z and on the left hand side that's going to give us z to the power e plus 1 equals absolute value of z squared. Now at this point obviously you can go ahead and replace z with a plus bi or some maybe some type of polar form and proceed like that but there's something that will help us a great deal if we consider absolute values. Now the absolute value is already on the right hand side so it wouldn't hurt to take the absolute value one more time but on the left we have a number so what do you think the absolute value of z to the power e plus 1 is going to be right? So whenever you have something like z to the power n, n doesn't have to be an integer by the way and you take the absolute value this just turns into the absolute value of z to the power n. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing here. We're going to take the absolute value. This is all, this is just going to stay the same basically. And then this is going to become the absolute value of z to the power e plus 1 equals the absolute value of z to the second power. This is nice because we have absolute values on both sides with different powers. And notice that e is about 2.7, so e plus 1 is definitely greater than 2. So let's go ahead and subtract the absolute value of z squared from both sides. And then now since this is bigger, we can go ahead and factor out the smaller one, which is 2. And now inside we're going to have, what do you need for the power to get e plus 1 if you add it to 2, right? It should be e minus 1. In other words, e plus 1 minus 2 minus 1. Make sense? Okay, great. Now, here's the thing. We have two factors set each factor equal to zero this gives you absolute value of z equals zero which immediately implies z equals zero because there is only one complex number whose absolute value can be zero and that is zero now the second one is a little bit more complicated not too complicated though we're going to set minus this minus one equal to zero that means the absolute value of z to the power of minus 1 is going to be 1, but notice that the absolute value of z is a real number. Any real number to a constant power equals 1 indicates that the absolute value or the base equals 1. There, we don't have another option in this case, right? It can't be negative 1 because absolute value cannot be negative, so on and so forth. So we got two results, and the absolute value of z equals 1 doesn't immediately give us z, but it gives us you know, a lot of good information about z. And notice that our equation was something like this, right? So knowing that absolute value of z is 1 is actually very helpful because that gives us z to the power e plus 1 equals 1. Make sense? Now, at this point, we can definitely go ahead and replace z with something. And what is that thing? It will be the polar form. And so z equals r e to the i theta, r representing the absolute value of z, but notice that the absolute value of z is equal to 1. So we don't have to worry about r, and we can just write this as e to the power i theta. So let's go ahead and replace z with that and see what happens. We're going to get 
e to the power i theta, and then that'll be raised to the power e plus one. And on the right hand side, you can replace one with something. How about e to the power two pi and i? If you think about one on the complex plane, it's basically gonna be on the real axis, right? Because it's a real number. And the angle it makes this argument is basically gonna be zero or two pi or four pi radians. In other words, it's gonna be a multiple of two pi. So in this case, n is an integer. So we have this equality. So far so good. Now, how do we handle something like this then, right? Well, we can kind of go ahead and distribute and write this as e to the i theta times e plus one equals e to the power two pi and i. And then from here we get i theta times e plus one equals two pi and i. Obviously i is gonna cancel out, leaving us with something simpler. And notice that we can find theta from here. Theta becomes two pi n over e plus one. Again, n is an integer. Make sense? Okay, so we found theta but we need to find z, right? We need to find the z values that satisfy this equation. How do we do that? Well, we just assume that z can be written as e to the i theta, especially this one because r is equal to one. So we can go ahead and now back substitute z equals e to the i theta. So now z can be written as e to the power i times that. So we can kind of write it as follows, two pi and i divided by e plus one. Make sense? So obviously for different values of n, because n is an integer, this is gonna take different values that are so infinitely many solutions in other words. For example, can n be zero? That would be a good question, right? Absolutely. And that, that, that'll actually give you z equals e to the power zero, which is one, right? Definitely that's going to be one of the solutions and notice that if you look at the original problem z to the e is z bar it's going to satisfy the original equation because the conjugate of one because it's a real number is one and one to the power e is also one so this will work make sense if n is equal to one we're going to get something like z equals e to the power two pi i over e plus one so in other words we have something like this you know, e to the i to the power some constant number. Again, that will be infinitely many solutions, so we're basically gonna stop at this point. Again, thank you for the idea. This was a great problem, I think. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe, I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.